So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Francois Aguila. So I'm the chief commercial officer of uh, Cao Chimigra for EMEA territory. And I would like to thank you to participate to this webinar with me here today, where I would like to explain you about a uh, new innovation from a uh, cow company, especially to uh, look for a new eco value chain into also new technology with digital printing solution. So first of all, I would like to share some information with you about our company. So, you can see here the company profile and the cow is actually a Japanese company founded in 1887. So we have actually more than uh, 130 years experience into the market of chemical and also consumer products. Our net sales represent 11.3 billion uh, euro consolidated and we have more than 33,000 employees around the world. The headquarter is located in Tokyo and if we look into the products, so our especially main area for consumer products, you can see that we can offer many different types of products and uh, solutions. So especially like uh, fabrics and home care products, uh, especially health and beauty products also and cosmetic. Regarding the chemical business, we are providing many different types of material also to the industries for varieties of applications and especially products such as oleochemical, uh, surfactant, fertilizers, but also inks that we are now developing and producing also to this uh, digital market. Regarding the inks, I would like also to introduce you a new group that was created uh, for really supporting and developing all this activity about the inks uh, so we have three major locations dedicated to that. One is coming from the United States, called as the Cow Collings, so based in Cincinnati, where there are two factories. One is dedicated for the inkjet inks, and the other uh, factory is actually mainly dedicated to the printhead refurbishment. In Spain, you can find also the Cow Chimigraph with uh, two main factories also. One is located in Barcelona and dedicated especially to the flexo ink production. And the other one also in Barcelona dedicated full application of development of the injured inks. And then the organization in Japan, so with the business office in uh, Tokyo area and with our R&D centers and also factory for the injured inks located in Wakayama. So this is actually creating what we call the group Cow APS. And you can see that we launched recently a new website where we are defining all these activities and you can get all details about this group and our organization and also the capability of our products and what we are developing into this market. So a few years ago, Kao was launching uh, an ESG strategy called Kiren Life, uh, Lifestyle Plan. And this strategy is actually ongoing with uh, some action plan to be fulfilled until 2030. So you can see here some major actions that uh, Kao is trying really to push on the market, especially for these uh, environmental issues. So we want to have, for example, like universal product design, easy to use for everyone. Also to be able to use only sustainable raw materials for our consumer products, but also for the consumer market worldwide. And for sure also to reduce the consumption of plastic usage and try to achieve a zero waste into this, this area. So we are developing new concept of packaging and this is a really important point for Kao as a group in order to try to achieve this ESD strategy uh, in the coming years. So my colleague will show uh, another webinar later about this uh, ESG strategy. So you can get more details in the next webinar about this, uh, this activity from Kao. So in the last Drupa 2016, uh, we introduced already some new solution, especially dedicated to the paper industry. So it was an innovation about the eco value chain for the paper also, especially on the recycling area. 
and we introduce new technologies, which are coming more from the toner base, but also the inkjet inks, like water-based inkjet inks, encapsulated technology, encapsulated pigment technology. And this is where we also gave some introduction into the market. So today I would like to discuss again about this packaging, let's say uh, supply chain industry, and also to, ex uh, to give you some details about where cow is positioned into this market. So in fact, we have two positions mainly into this market. One is more about the material supplier because with the cow APS as I explained to you before, we are able to provide inks, uh, inkjet inks and also flexo inks into the market, uh, especially as a material supplier. And then also we have a strong presence into the market as a brand owner, especially because of the product that cow consumer is able to offer into the market and with our own brands that we are promoting also into this market. So this helps us to have a different view of the packaging industry from different sides. And this is where we are working on in order to achieve different types of product using all the knowledge that we can accumulate from these positions. The packaging industry is using different substrate, as you know, so especially like glass, metal, cardboard, and wood. But today I would like really to focus more about uh, discussion and innovation that we are providing now to the market as a cow group, and especially for the plastic, uh, the plastic industry. So if we look into the consumption and production of the plastic into over the years, we can see that there was really a big growth of demand and production of the plastic into the market. So since 2010, the growth was like 1.7%, but it was really increasing, as you can see, over the 1980. And this is actually continuing to grow into the market. So the expectation is that this market will really grow until 2030. And then the major issue that we are facing here is about the recycling of this material. As you can see, only 8.4, uh, of the plastic is actually recycled into the market. And 76% of this material is going to the landfill. So this is really creating now some issues in terms of pollution, and in terms of also how to consider about to treat this material after usage. Then if we look into this waste, let's say that the plastic film is creating also into the market, uh, we can see that if we look into the plastic film generation uh, in EU, the major, uh, let's say, contribution or how to say area where we can get such kind of waste is coming mainly from the packaging area. So it's 60%. And this is one of the biggest points today where everyone is trying to look in order to see how we can treat those wastes. This waste is creating many troubles in terms of pollution for sure. So there is a pollution on the sea, there is a pollution on the landfill, and there is also many issues about how really to recycle such kind of product. The benefit to recycle this product is quite high. Because here you can see, for example, some example that if we are recycling 1 million tons of plastic, it's like you are removing 1 million scar of the road. So the concern is really high and everyone is now really trying to look for some solution into this. In terms of consumption, you can see here that we are now reaching the highest level of uh, consumption of plastic per inhabitant. So it's around 173 k k uh, kg. And this is really increasing again every year. So the EU directives are now to really going to be reviewed in order to try to make sure that within 2030, all the packaging into the EU market should be reusable and recycled. And this is really now something getting important because everyone has to try to get some new ideas and new innovation in order to make such kind of uh, target to be fully recycled or fully reusable in the 2030. 
There is some link here on the presentation where you can get some more details about this uh, European Commission. So if you are interested, you can see really all the details about what is going to be, let's say, as a key trend into this market in the, in the coming years. So then from our side, we are considering for sure a lot about these issues of waste and uh, pollution and also usage of the plastics. And we are trying to develop some new innovations, especially for this eco value chain concept of the plastic. So we are working in two ways. One is what we call the innovation reduce and the other one is what we call the innovation recycle. So, let me here show you a little bit about what we call, let's say, the loop of uh, the eco value chain concept. So from our side, you can see that what we are trying to do is, uh, as I said, to make two types of innovation in terms of reduce, so playing on the raw materials, more on the products also, but also on deliveries, retails, and the user at the end. And then also there is the innovation on the recycle area, which is more about how to dispose the plastics and also how to make the recycle of this plastic. The key challenge of this full loop is to try to make a PET film, for example, to become again a PET film and to be reusable into this market. This is today very difficult because of many reasons. Uh, and uh, this is one of the points that could help really the market to get some improvement about this type of material to be used. So from our side, what we are doing is two solutions. One is we are now thinking about or developing things for the eco package solution. And the other one is more about the eco digital printing solution. So let me focus here on the product where I would like to show you the latest kind of innovation that we are developing today. So first of all, about the packaging. So Kao is involved into the consumer market, as I said, and for sure we are providing many varieties of products uh, for this market. So we are really concerned about how we could improve our packaging to be more recyclable, to be also avoiding waste into the market. And we are developing different technologies here like that. So one of them is trying to make more concentrate type of products in order to reduce the, the, the usage of, let's say, big bottles and others in, and to reduce the amount of plastic in this, in this point. So that could be a reduce of 40% of the plastic usage. We are also developing new technologies like, for example, refilling pouch that can be very easily to use and also to be recycled. And for example, technology like this one, where we can see here is a small bottle uh, and this is where also we can just utilize this kind of refilling pouch to be uh, adapted to this smart bottle and to avoid to have to reuse again some uh, rigid bottles plastic and this is reducing also the plastic consumption. And the last innovation that we are providing here is actually what we call the My Kiren by Kao. So it's a new development concept that Kao is actually launching into the, pro into the market. And as you can see here with this technology, we are able to reduce the plastic usage like over 50%. So this is something really important. And this is also, we think it could be a good trend for the, for the future into the market. So in the next, I would like to show you a small video uh, about this technology. Sorry, there is no sounds because there was a problem on the video, but anyhow, it was just the music. So you can, you can see the details on the video.
Okay, so so as you can see in this video, our target really is to try to make such kind of new concepts for, uh, uh, let's say, new types of uh, bottles to be reusable and to also to be fully recyclable. So this is one of the new ideas and concepts that Cow is now introducing into the market. Then looking into the ink itself also, so in 2016, Cow was one of the first world leader, let's say ink manufacturer company in order to offer some solution, especially to print on flexible packaging. So we develop uh, some solution at that time in order to try to compare the solutions with the solvent gravier printing, it's comes especially coming from the, you know, the Japanese market. And we could improve really a lot of uh, areas, like especially the emissions area, the gas emissions area. And then we could really reduce such kind of emissions area. And uh, we uh, presented this as a new technology into the market at that time. This technology is called LunaJet. It's a water-based pigmented ink with a special encapsulation pigment technology. And then we are able to print on such kind of, let's say non-porous surface, which is the uh, plastic films and provide a good quality. So such kind of technology was awarded by the Ministry of Economy in Japan. And this is today one of the solution that we are now also developing and promoting more and more into the market. So since that time in 2016, when we introduced this technology, we uh, made a lot of tests in order to see how our water-based ink can really be used into this plastic film area. And we did many tests, as you can see, with many different uh, science tech technology that we have internally coming in different fields from the consumer market, but also the chemical market. And we develop again, this water-based ink, which is able to be printed on many different types of surface like PE, PET and OPP film. So the benefit of this is that actually this uh, water-based ink can be printed on this film without primer. So this is making really also a good difference. And thanks to this interfacial nanotechnology that we are also developing, we can really achieve this target to print without the primer. So the ink is one of the uh, parameter, let's say, into this printing industry for plastic films. But there is also many other key factors that we had to consider. One of them for sure is the printhead, the inkjet printhead, because using pigmented ink, you need also to consider about using, you know, the right technology of the printhead with recirculation, with the right drop size, with the right speed and everything. So that's something that we also had to analyze and study from our side. And the other key issue also is about the dryer. So because you need to dry the ink for sure after printing, and depending on speed, depending on quality, depending on also technology of drying system that you are using, for sure, this is also affecting at the end to the image quality. So there is many science, let's say, to be researched on this. It's not a question only working on the ink, but it's fully global research into the substrate with the material you are going to jet about the ink and drying and everything. So Kao is having actually in the uh, laboratory an original printer equipped with such kind of materials and where you can see that we can print like 80 meters per minute, 600 dpi with several colors. And this is helping us in fact to develop and to fine tune our solution dedicated really to such kind of this activity. So also, as another alternative solution using our water-based technology, we was uh, looking into how to make really the best solution to make a front printing. There is a challenge about this to print on the front printing side from the packaging, you know, flexible uh, plastic films, especially to make a good resistance of the, of the ink layer that you're applying on the films. And one of the challenge was to make such kind of uh, technology resistance to the alcohol fastness. So we study about several possibilities about the formulation of the ink. And then we found one of the good solution to cooperate, let's say with such kind of uh, dispersions uh, polymer and also the polymer binders based on polyesters. So 
that was giving us really the best results. And as you can see here on these results for alcohol fastness was very good. Uh, solubility in ethanol was also very low. And we could get also an important point, which is a really homogeneous films uh, into the plastic. So this is really uh, achieving the best result from our side. And this is a technology also that we are now offering to the, to the market. Here you can see some example about uh, what we are doing already in the Japanese market printed with our water-based inks. And uh, this is something again, that we are now again promoting more and more, but this gives you already some example of how it can be achieved with our inks into such kind of uh, plastic films industry. So then the other concept, uh, if we come back about this loop of the value chain, so you can see that the next one that we are focusing on is about recycling, because it's good, as we said, to develop a new strategic product, innovation in packaging, inks and everything. But at the end, we also need to consider about how really we can recycle, we can reuse the material. And this is where we want also to make some kind of new innovation of so let me focus now about yes, this technology of recycling where Kao is now going to introduce. So this is a kind of new uh, information that we are providing to the market as a new uh, technology. And I would like to show you here a different concept that we have actually to develop what we call a thermal switching polymer. So it's a special polymer that uh, resistance to the water, but also reacting depending on the temperature. So this polymer can be used as a coating agent on the film, but also as an ink component. So where we are now developing this technology and I can show you here this video. So if you put a plastic film printed, of course, with water-based inks or our water-based inks on the water at 30 degrees, you can see that actually nothing happened. The ink is resistance into the water. And even after 10 minutes, there is no effect into the print. So the polymer is not reacting. The ink is also remaining on the surface and there is no issue about this. Then let's repeat now the same uh, test, but increasing the temperature of the water at 70 degrees. Then here you can see that automatically the surface of the ink is completely removed from the field. So this is where the reaction of this special thermal switching polymer is coming on. This setup of the temperature for the polymer can be adjusted also from our side, depending on the, on the needs or the requirement for that. But you can see that even in a very short time, all the surface of the ink can be removed from the plastic field. So, this is one of the really latest innovation that actually Kao is presenting to the market. And we are going to introduce this one also step by step to the market. But this can give really a good opportunity for thinking about recycling and de-inking, especially about plastic films. Where is the target? So of course, target is to make a kind of new eco recycle innovation compared to the standard solution that is, is existing into the market. Today, mainly the uh, all recycling is used with solvent or also the like alkaline aquas. So, but this uh, for sure have always some also environmental issue and uh, the risk of uh, contact with the human like skin irritations and so on. And also there is some limitation, as you know, about what type of material can be recycled. So the target from us is to, again, offer a new eco recycling solution, trying to use only hot water, and then to be able to recycle on all the films which could be existing in the market. So it's a quite challenging for sure, but we think that we have now such kind of good technology that can be implemented in this uh, recycling. And then we would like to develop more and more about around this technology. What are the new recycling targets for plastic in the, in the future? So uh, here you can see that actually, actually here the uh, European, uh, what we call European 
So it's the European Organization for Packaging and uh, Environmental. They are putting some targets that the plastic should be recycled at 55% in 2030. So this is also quite challenging, but it's clear that now with, to achieve this target, all of us into this, uh, let's say, uh, packaging industry have to bring new solution and new technology. And this is really what we are trying to do now from our side. So as a global conclusion, uh, where we can really offer some technologies is actually, as I said, in a different part. So we are trying really to look into this full loop of uh, supply chain and try to make some innovation for this. So again, working on the packaging itself. So trying to optimize the usage of the plastic into the bottles and the recipient of such kind of consumer market working into the inks itself in order to be able to continue to print on this substrate, but reducing emissions, reducing also the ink layers and such kind of other materials, let's say, or other, uh, uh, how to say, options. And also about the recycling, introducing this new uh, thermal switching polymer, which is again, really important in order to confirm and to be sure that the material itself can be easily recycled and reused. Then, so here you can see our contacts. So with uh, my contact, but also contact of my colleagues in other area in Asia and America, and our cow print new website. So if you want to get more information, and if you are of course having any interest in our product, please don't hesitate to contact us and we will be for sure uh, replying to you as soon as possible. So this is the end of my presentation. And uh, we'll just try to see, so we still have some time for some question. I will try to see if there is some question here. Okay. Yes, I can see some question coming. So about uh, what color of Lunajet ink is available in the market and if white, for example, is also available. So for this, yes, we are able to actually to offer white uh, color ink. So there is a full set of ink like CMYK plus white available. This is also al already something existing and printing like as I show you before with some material in Japan. So we can provide such kind of material into, into the European uh, part also the result any problem. So, there is also some uh, kind of other questions about the, uh, is there any uh, possibility to use the Lunajet ink for all the types of printhead available into the market? And yes, that's possible. We can adjust, of course, the viscosity and the parameters of the ink to be uh, jetted with the printhead. So as I said, it's a water-based pigmented ink with a special encapsulation pigment technology. And this is making possibility, of course, to be used with a good uh, stability and stability into the printhead. So there is no problem about this. Uh, we can adapt, let's say, the ink to varieties of printhead available in the market. Then I can see also here some questions yes, about so when the thermal switching polymer will be available. So this issue is, uh, you know, the thermal uh, switching polymer that we presented here is one of the solution, as I show you, among all this recycle area. So the technology itself is available, but we need still to uh, look and discuss with uh, key partners into this uh, recycling industry area to understand also how we can make all the procedure available for the market. So. I don't have any date today to tell you about when this will be available, but for sure we are now preparing this and in the coming, let's say, months and others, we will, uh, we will give you more details about this. Okay, so I think now we reach the time of the presentation. I would like to thank you again about participating this uh, webinar with me. And uh, I hope that we will be able to see each other soon in a, let's say, real conference place. And uh, just I would like to thank you again and just uh, stay safe in the
Thank you very much.